Rana Yasmin will be your host for today's session and will keep you posted as we proceed through the session. Before we begin, I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Dhruva Chuti Bhuya, sir, and our esteemed faculty members from different departments of Dibrugarh University present here. Also, I welcome Dr. Borkha Mesdas, ma'am, from Department of Petroleum Technology, Dibrugarh University, who is also a part of the chapter serving as the faculty advisor. I would also like to welcome all the scholars and industry people around the world for joining us. We are very happy to have you on board. So without any further delay, I would like to introduce you all to Dr. Dhruva Jyoti Bhuya, sir, who will be our speaker for today's session on stress and anxiety management during COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Dhruva Jyoti Bhuya has done his postgraduate degree MD in Psychiatry from Assam Medical College, and his MBBS from Assam Medical College, Dibrugar itself. He is currently affiliated as an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry, Assam Medical College, Dibrugar. Some of his current achievements are, he was selected for Baba Sahib Dr. Ambedkar National Fellowship Award 2019, which was conferred by Bharatiya Dalit Sahitya Academy on 8th and 9th December 2019. He received the Certificate of Excellence in Young Faculty Categories in Top 25 List Awards 2018 by EET CRS Research Wing for Excellence in Professional Education and Industry. He has won the Bharat Vikas Award 2017 for outstanding contribution to the field of common mental health. So we are very honored to have you here with us today. I'm sure everyone is eagerly waiting for you to start this session. But before that, I would like to take the privilege to announce before you two good news from our chapter for the upcoming week. Firstly, we are going to organize a national level quiz competition in the first week of August 2020. And secondly, we are going to start a new schedule to upload facts and petroleum related topics on our social media platforms on a daily basis, weekly basis, and monthly basis as well. So I, I request everyone and hope that they will support us for the growth of this chapter. So, sir, you can now proceed with this today's session. And I would request everyone to kindly mute themselves and keep their video off so that our speaker can proceed to the session smoothly. Also, in the meantime, you can drop your queries in the chat box present on the top right corner of your screen. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Am I audible? Hello? Am I audible? You are. You are perfectly audible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Respected faculty members of Dibrugarh University, SPE, and all the delegates present here. At the outset, I must thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk a few lines about the current very pertinent topic that is stress and anxiety during this COVID time. At this answer, I have got one disclaimer actually. Basically, I am a doctor and you know that doctors are the most boring people on this earth. So, and being a psychiatrist, you believe that I have got the license to do anything and everything that I want. So, since my lecture will be quite boring and it will be really a Herculean task for you to um, concentrate on this topic for next half an hour or 45 minutes for which really you require a great deal of attention for which I need to thank you beforehand. So thank you all. I, at this moment, I'd like to say that our whole world has been centering our around only one word that is COVID. COVID and Corona has become the part of our life and we are in our day-to-day -day conversation also, we are talking only about COVID, which may be directly related to it or indirectly related to it. So we are all stressed. 
at this moment, the people are talking about number of deaths and number of people being uh, affected by this COVID. But at the same time, we all are scared. At least we can say that our mental health is also in danger. So let's talk about our mental health first. And when I talk about the mental health, many a times people will say that uh, don't think too much about COVID and that's why you are becoming more and more worried. It is really a matter of dilemma actually where that mind resides, from which organ do we think or we feel. Those people who are from the literary background, they will always say that it is our heart with which we feel. But in my first disclaimer, I have said that doctors are the most boring people, so we'll remove that beauty from the heart, and I will say that the heart has got no other function apart from pumping out the blood. So people used to say that Suno Dilki, and you always remember this kind of symbol of what it denotes. But remember, by mind, we mean certain functions. These functions include our ability to think or ability to feel or ability to judge and whatnot. And these are basically the functions of the brain. So I would like to change this uh, title to Suno Dilki to Suno Dimaki. So we will be talking about a few of the most boring things about the brain. But before going into what is stress and anxiety, let's have an idea what this stress is. Then I will be talking about stress and anxiety specific to the current situation. We always say that the 17th century is the stage of enlightenment and in 18th century, human races have started reasoning for various natural phenomena for which the progress has started in the 19th century. Along with the progress in the 19th century, we have become more result-oriented. Therefore, I, the 20th century has become the age of anxiety because we are more worried about our future about our progress. But the next century, where we have become more and more result oriented, we have become more competitive, and that has removed few of our basic human tendencies. So the stress has become part of our life. At this moment, we cannot think about a life without stress. Now, what is stress actually? Stress is nothing but it is a pressure which is perceived to be from the outside and that can make us feel tense inside. Or in other words, it is certain unspecific responses of the body to any demand which is made upon it. So in a very simple language, we can say that occurrences of the environment, but uh, this causes tear, wear and tear of the body. Now, Shakespeare once said that's in the name, but I always say that everything is in the name itself. The stress itself signifies what it is, means it is something which is quite strong and tenacious in nature, which is regular and repetitive in nature that comes from the environment and causes emotional subjective suffering to the individual. And remember, this stress can be good as well as bad. When I say stress is bad, everyone will be agreeing with me. But when I say that stress is good, some people will find it quite unpalatable. But remember, uh, sometimes stress can be good. Suppose uh, your 
student they are not studying properly but on the day when the exam dates are announced everyone is stressed and that student uh, won't find him in the marketplace so he will be studying hard even that means this stress has increased his work efficiency therefore stress can sometimes be quite good but coming to the current scenario in assam actually from December 2019, I always say that the calmness of our mind has been ruined by all the seas that are available, probably. First, it came as mm, cab, then comes the car, after that came the corona or COVID, then in between China. So all these seas have ruined our calmness of mind and at this situation or at this juncture, we are all scared of COVID. We are all afraid of going out because everywhere there have been announcement of lockdown and there have been many news reports that these many people are being infected with COVID and these many people have died. Therefore, we are quite anxious, remember, uh, it is quite normal to be anxious. It is quite normal to be scared of COVID. If you remember this famous uh, quote of Mountain Dew, dar sab ko lagta hai aur gala sab ka sukta hai. But remember, dar ke aage zit. But is it really necessary to be afraid or scared of COVID? The answer is in this poster, where Ram Gopal has said darna zaruri hai. Why it is necessary to be scared is that if I am not scared about COVID, then I won't be focused in which have been talked about. Even if there is a COVID patient sitting beside me, I will hug him or I will handshake him and thereby I might endanger my life also. Therefore, I will always say that darna zaruri hai. At this moment, we cannot sleep properly. We are becoming more and more tensed. Some people might be wondering why this is happening and why we people are suffering because of a very tiny virus. People are dying, okay, fine, but it is not me. But why I am scared about? The answer is given by Park actually. It is based on a treatise called Assumptive World. What is assumptive world is that we know that death is certain, but still that nothing bad can happen to us and world is really beautiful. My world, this is my world and there cannot be any bad thing that can occur to my world. And that has made our life quite beautiful. We are living that life. Similarly, when the COVID was first announced, that it was when there was a news that uh, so many people have died in Wuhan province of China. At that time, we Indians thought that, okay, it won't occur to India. So this is our assumptive world. But when the cases are being reported in Assam, then all those measures of lockdown then closure of educational institutes were taken and we were quite relaxed that at least in Assam there will not be any COVID because our arrangements are so good. So this was our assumptive world. But when the first COVID case was detected on the 31st of March 2020, at that time I say it because on that day I was in a training program where I was talking about mental health for all the healthcare workers. There I say, today is the day of Mars ending of our mental peace or assumptive world. Really that has occurred because till now every day the cases are increasing. So we are no longer in that has uh, decreased and our hope has been diminishing. So we are all disturbed. Why these disturbances are here? Because 
of certain reasons because of the infectivity. We all know that COVID-19 is very infective. Then people are talking about or there is certain media hype of fatality, though there are fatality, but it is not that high. Sometimes lack of knowledge because this COVID-19 strain is quite new strain. Therefore, uh, we even don't know much about this virus and every day new and guideline has been coming and lack of definitive treatment is another reason why we are all scared. Another reason is that the virus, it can spread very fast and it can make the person infected very fast. But even if it is fast moving, another fast moving thing has been around and which is infecting the people more than the COVID-19 is the rumor. There are many rumors that are being circulated in social media or any mainstream media and that has made us more and more scared. Are we really facing only COVID-19 pandemic? My answer is no, because there have been parallel pandemic stuff. Second pandemic, first pandemic is of course COVID-19. The second pandemic is definitely the pandemic of mental health related issues. Third is the pandemic of your Mm, economic slowdown and hunger, then fourth is infodemics. That is the information we are bombarded with lots of information, then we can handle. And we are all distressed or suffering because of all these mm, pandemics. When the lockdown was announced, even in Dibrugar, the there is a news around probably Dibrugar will see another lockdown. I don't know the authenticity of that news, but still we are having that fear. Many people are having because Guwahati has been uh, locked down, then Jorhat. So everywhere there have been locked down and we have experienced lockdown. It reminds me of Anand Bakshi Sahab when he wrote his famous song, Ham Tum Me Kamre Me Bandho. There were a line when it was mentioned that bahar se koi andar na sake or andar se koi bahar na ja sake. At least we can feel what he meant at that time. And these words, lockdown and quarantine has become part and parcel of our current vocabulary. The people are talking about social distancing. And sometimes the social distancing word itself has got certain negative connotation. Why social distancing is that? Uh, earlier it was thought that it is uh, travel or it is contaminated through droplet infection and droplet can uh, go up to two meters. Then therefore the people have advocated that there should be social distancing. But when the word social has come, many people have started thinking uh, or equating it with social isolation. Therefore, a better term would be rather physical distancing rather than the social distancing. And this social distancing has made us even more scared. I am more scared because I, yeah, the people have started thinking like this, that if I am infected with COVID-19, then I will be quarantined or put in isolation. Then what will happen to my family? Another thought is that if I get infected, then probably I might be infecting my loved ones. And this has really made the people more and more worried. Then another thing is that our basic life has changed, our basic mood has changed from living to survival mode. The problem that has occurred is that uh, all the things have been closed down. There have been online classes, then exams, all these issues have come out. When people have talked about closure of the educational institutes, there are actually two types of closure. One is the reactive and other is the proactive. In reactive, what happens when one person in the 
institution is infected, then the whole institution will be closed down. But if there is no infection, then as a precautionary measure, if it is closed, then it is called the proactive closure. In our case, it was a proactive closure. But then the people have started thinking about what will happen to our children or what about their education. Then came the online classes. Okay, fine. This is the most feasible option. But people have started putting it. Uh, other aspects like the screen time, because earlier all of us were talking about the screen time, but when the classes are on, are we not talking about the screen time? Are we not worried about the screen time? People have started abusing the smartphone which was given by the parents to the child for academic purposes. They are also using it for other purposes also. So thereby there is risks of even uh, internet addiction or other kind of behavioral addiction like gaming disorder and whatnot. Then of course, exam is another problem. So the people are rather not feeling very secure about these online classes or online activity they are even more thinking about its risks also. Therefore, we are more and more worried. At one hand, we have got only one option that people have talked about social distancing. So work from home is one option. But when I work from home, I am allowing the whole world to look into my house or look into my living room. So where is my privacy? issues which are there and these issues will make us more and more tensed. Our life has changed. I say that it is many people have started thinking about their future, what will happen. They find that future is quite gloomy and they find that there they have come down to the survival mode, forget about the livelihood. Therefore, uh, there is a hoarding where I have written that it is Ram Bharose, probably our life is. Now the whole timeline has changed. Probably many people have started thinking that our life will not be same again. I don't know. It is too early to comment. But yes, definitely the time has changed. Earlier the timeline was AD and BC. But now we call it as before Corona, BC. BC is during Corona and AC is after Corona. And we don't know how these seas will go. There have been various changes in the life. And I always say that our social life has changed, our social matrix has changed, how our social behavior has changed. And there have been various banned activities nowadays like uh, it is banned to shake hands or hug and probably our great uh, statesman would have been very sad uh, because this was his one of his favorite song that is Bahume Saleao. this is no longer a um, permissible activity at this moment so really uh, we had to change a lot Nowadays, there are some other trends or new normal situation, what we will see. I say that social distancing should not be equated with social isolation. Yes, we have got our mobile social media and we can communicate with the others through this. But it is many people have started thinking that it's better to be Akele Hamnam and Akele Tum rather then being alone, remember when you are alone, lots of thoughts will percolate through your mind and you know that idle brain is the devil's workshop and we need social support for which we have to rely with some other activities which we can do online like we are meeting online today also. This is because of this COVID-19 only else we will not have met digitally 
at this juncture. And the friendship nowadays, the whole society has changed. Probably we are becoming more and more asocial. Why I am so saying about this is that though we are having Facebook and other social media, even if the people are residing under the same roof, when they will call each other through WhatsApp, the dinner is ready or lunch is ready, let's uh, join the dining table. That has been the scenario. But when these things are being imposed, we are finding it quite difficult to accept it. And how it was normal, part of our life, you know, uh, because the people have started differentiating in the Facebook. Let's be clear, we are only online friends or even in Bollywood movie songs, even there have been many songs like Lele Le Number Mera. So this kind of activity has become the reality, though people thought that this will be mere a song. Another thing is that a lot of things have been changed because of Corona, because we thought that we have been repeatedly told that whenever we should go out, we should wear a mask. It has arrived at Sase Jansar that there is no negative connotation of the famous Asami's saying, Mukhapinda Bhadraluk. Really, nowadays the people will regard it as a positive sign. And earlier in our uh, Indian culture, we would have said that Otiti de Bhava, but now we will say that to Otiti Riski Bhava. And all those uh, malls, gyms, then your cinema halls, multiplexes are being closed down, so we have got other options like Netflix, Prime Video and whatnot. So this has become the new normal and we need some time to adjust with this. And those people who are adjusting with this are also worried because they are afraid that they might uh, have to be dependent on all these issues. Another biggest problem this COVID is having is that it's the stigma. The people have started being the positive patient as corona patient or a human bomb which can uh, kill anyone. But remember, uh, we doctors always believe that we do not have got right to classify the person, we can classify the disease. This patient is not a corona patient. Tomorrow it might be me also. Remember what is the better term is that a person infected with corona. But don't call these people as corona. Uh, therefore, many a times when the people mm, feel that there is corona, they feel that it is quite stigmatizing word. But remember, it is not uh, your crime to be a corona positive. See, even a corona person has been doing tremendous work. Those people who have recovered can contribute significantly in the form of plasma donation. So they, they should be viewed as quite valuable person. And therefore, this stigma has to be removed. Now, how we will differentiate, because I have already said that it is normal to be anxious, but there is a very thin line between normal anxious and abnormal anxious thing. Now, how we will identify that our anxiety is a bit more? If our, we are thinking only about corona most of the period of the day, then this is probably not normal. And when you have started feeling that your heart has started beating more, it is not that famous song, my heart is beating. Remember, it is actually palpitation and this palpitation is a sign of anxiety. This anxiety will raise your BP. Sometimes it can cause headache. Sometimes there will be lack of concentration. You cannot concentrate on anything. 
and there will be problem with your sleep. If these symptoms are there, then always think that your anxiety is not normal. Now, this is the time when you will have to do something to your mental health. Because Lesegu once said, you get stomach ulcers not from what you eat, but from what is eating you. Means if you are more anxious, your acid secretion will increase and you will get stomach ulcer. Too much of anxiety reduces your immunity. And those who are diabetic, what happened? Their diabetic control is lost and their sugar will be too much high. These are all physical consequences of stress. Let's come to the psychological consequences, what will happen. Now you consider about anyone. Nowadays, we are not being able to follow a normal routine. We cannot go out to meet some of our friends or our demands are not being fulfilled or gratified. Therefore, we are having frustration. When we are frustrated at that time, Become more and more irritable. When we become more and more irritable, then our personal relationship with the others are being hampered. Sometimes we are too stressed, we become more and more anxious, and we call it as anxiety disorders. Sometimes we feel that there is no hope for future. Life is not worth living because even if I die, Probably my family members won't be able to handle my dead body also. And it's better to die on my own rather than dying of corona. So this is the stage where we call it as depression. And a lot of cases of suicide has increased during this period. Many people have started abusing the substances because of anxiety. And it is also contributed by all those rumors. Because nowadays, I always say that our there have been two very active universities around. The first university is WhatsApp University, and second is the Facebook University. In these universities, the people have started making tremendous uh, inventions or discoveries. Uh, the discoveries are like this, because all the time we have been um, telling the people that we should or wash our hands with soap and water repeatedly because the virus can be there in the surface and if we touch it and after that if we touch our face then through the nostrils or through the mouth it can enter into our respiratory tract and thereby it can make us infected now another option to this was that people have started saying that at least you should uh, clean it through uh, sanitizer, and that sanitizer should contain at least 70% of alcohol. And from that statement, few of the discoveries have been made in these two universities like this. It is said that alcohol kills coronavirus, and if we take alcohol, that will kill all the coronavirus which has entered into our body, but remember this is the blunder because there is no health benefit of alcohol. Alcohol decreases your immunity and when the person drinks too much, then forget about the basic hygiene. He will forget about social distancing and everything. Then another thing is that cigarette. There was a study which was misquoted where the people have found that among those affected by corona, out of them, most of them were non-smokers. So another theory has raised probably cigarette smoking will give the added benefit or the immunity. But remember, the cigarette uh, smoking, it is injurious to your respiratory epithelium. I mean, you know this virus affects your respiratory tract. And moreover, those people who drink and take tobacco, for them sharing is caring. Then if you share things with each other, then you 
run the risk of transmitting the virus from one surface to the another. Then, if the stress is too much, then the person can even develop psychosis. And when we call it psychosis, is a very major kind of psychiatric illness. And you people, by common name, you call it as madness. Of course, when your concentration goes off, you cannot remember properly. Your memory even uh, becomes very poor. Suicide rate has been increased, and nowadays you won't believe in my OPD. Nowadays, the number of cases attending our OPD has decreased because of social distancing, and most of the people are afraid to come to the hospital because they fear that they might be contaminated with this virus. But remember, even if we are seeing 20 patients a day, out of those 20 patients, at least we get six to seven cases with suicidal ideas or attempt. This has increased to such an extent. And most of them are in this age group that is 15 to 29 years. You remember, this is the most productive period of our life. Now, Therefore, we need to do something to deal with all these stresses. There are different ways to deal with these stresses, and probably you people are adopting few of these healthy ways, but let's see what are these unhealthy ways. The first unhealthy ways I have already said, don't uh, be into the trap of WhatsApp University. This is a big no to this if you are thinking about it. The normal activities which are quite pleasant in other days can be used. Why I have given it that whenever we talk about alcohol, people don't tend to listen. Rather, they have got many misconceptions because in my drug addiction center, if I ask anyone what are the substances that you take or if you take alcohol or not, the usually the first answer is no. But when we probe more, then they sometimes say, sir, I don't drink alcohol, but I take beer. Remember, may it be beer, may it be whiskey, may it be rum, but cousin, it is the same thing. It is alcohol only because it contains ethanol. And I do repeat that it do not have got any health benefit. Many people will be arguing with me that many doctors say that it will in, uh, boost up your cardiac activities. But remember, one peg of alcohol will increase your blood pressure by two millimeter of mercury. So you have to be very much cautious about that. Cigarette. Whenever stressed, many people used to take cigarette. But remember, uh, even Rahul Ravid is uh, tired of saying, Tambaku se run out hone se base because it contains, apart from nicotine, it contains more than 4,500 out of that 69 are cancer producing. So choice is yours. And if the students are viewing this presentation, then I request them to have a look into this slide. What this slide shows is that it's content. It comes, it, contains nicotine, which is used in insecticides. It contains ammonia, which is there in toilet cleaner, like heartpick. Then it contains steric acid, which is there in candle wax. Uh, then arsenic is a poison. And cadmium, it is there in battery. Acid is also there produced during that, which is there in battery. So it is your choice whether you take a cigarette or a cocktail of Begon, Harpik, and whatnot. Therefore, this is really, really dangerous. Yes, these are certain activities which we can do even now. Do people are talking about avoiding the gym? Yes, but we can be engaged with certain indoor activities. Probably you people have seen many of your friends, you didn't know that they were such great singers to sing with Kumar Sanu, 
then Himes Resmia and what not. See, these are these were our hidden talents. Earlier, probably we didn't get the time to work on that, but nowadays we are getting proper time. Sometimes mu listening to the music might be quite relaxing. We can do that sometimes without doing anything, simply lying down in the bed, maybe for half an hour might even be quite pleasurable for us. Remember, we have to prepare for a life uh, beyond COVID also. Therefore, our preparation to deal with COVID and the anxiety related to it should be as good as the UPI protection that Amir Khan is talking about in this ad. Our goals have to be smart. Now we are talking about smart cities, smartphone and whatnot. But when I call it as a smart goal, means your goal have to be very much specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. If we try to uh, achieve something or set something which we cannot achieve, then we are destined to suffer from depression. Therefore, it has to be quite realistic. We need to understand that. I always say that life is bigger than the COVID. Therefore, we should try to enjoy our life because we should try to celebrate our life. The best thing and the easiest thing for this stress management is the time management. Now think about your day-to-day -day routine. Most of we are confined to our home until and unless you are a healthcare worker or a banker or a poli police personnel or a person working in the administration. Our life has started with COVID. When I get up from bed, I will simply check my mobile. How many people are suffering from COVID or how many cases are being detected in um, Assam? You will check the Twitter handle of our honorable health minister or some corona tracker or COVID tracker, whatnot. Then the news channels, then a newspaper, whatnot, even your discuss everything is COVID, COVID, and COVID till you sleep. Remember, in our earlier days, we used to say that we don't have got time for our time to play. We don't have got time to relax. Now, we have got only time and time at our disposal. So what we can do? First and is that we should keep ourselves away from that infodemics. I am not saying that don't go in, don't have a look at the COVID news. No, we will have to have all those news. But remember, you should limit it at least twice or thrice, but not more than that. You take that news only in one media. It might be your Twitter, it might be a new channel or whatnot, but not more than three times a day, else you will be more worried, more anxious, because everywhere the news will be like this. Uh, these many people are being infected per day. These many people have died. So that will make us more and more worried. And when Amitabh Bachchan has been suffering from Corona, probably he has become the national corona, and then all the news will be suffering from uh, centering around him. Remember, he is a real life hero, not a real life hero. He is not a god. So he is also a human being. So he is suffering from Corona. There is nothing more than that. So. Just focus on your life. The new channels will be focusing like that. Uh, he could sleep at night. Good, but that should not hit the news. So even new channels should not look for TRP at this time. But whenever I talk about time management or keeping myself away from all these things, then these messages props up.
दैट इज दिल कहता है फेसबुक छोड़ दो और दिमाग कहता है बकवास मत कर बट वील हैव टू टेक ए कॉल बिकॉज सोशियल मीडिया वी शुड बी will be talking about its judicious use not the over use not the misuse this is the only medium through which we can communicate with the world we should make a routine at this moment what we should do we can devote some time with our children we can look after their studies we can prepare food for them we can help each other we can what's a movie together because earlier we didn't have got that time so at least we can enjoy the family time so this is what we can do another thing is that most of the people will be talking about that whenever i am talking about or thinking about corona i am having problem with my sleep but remember your sleep is very important for a proper mental health and we say that eight hours sleep is quite essential those people who are having their children or those students who are uh, attending this webinar for them i say that sleep is very important for your memory also because whatever we study that will be stored in the memory only during sleep consolidate during sleep therefore studying all night is not a good option in this regard i would like to give certain tips for good sleep because i know when i will finish this presentation that question will come because it is invariably a common problem faced by most of us what is that first thing is that your bed is meant only for Don't go to bed until you feel sleepy. What happens if you go to the bed and if you are not getting proper sleep, get up of the bed, then you work something. But remember, that work should not be your laptop or mobile. You can read a book or you can do something else. Then, when you get that sleep, you go to the bed. Then, while lying down in the bed, don't. clock repeatedly else what will happen oh my god it's already 2 am and i am not having sleep and that will make us more and more worried and our sleep will run away keep your time for getting from bed fixed no matter at what time you sleep at night that deficit will prep on the sleep in the next day why did you have avoided daytime nap avoid tea and coffee after 6 pm because these are stimulants it will be of exercise sometimes helps and sometimes what we can do is that bath with water can make us quite refreshing and that can lead to a very good sleep talking about the routine and this routine should incorporate each and every activity activity for relaxation also when i talk about relaxation it can be anything that anything might be listening to the music some people might be da dancing or singing or some people might be drawing or writing something you should engage yourself to any activities but that has to be time specific another thing that you can do is that in this rigor is that keep one activity for your yoga meditations this will really help but another thing is that i said that all the seas have ruined the calmness of our mind sometimes simply divert your mind from covid and corona and you can simply loiter around here and there even that will make you relax if you don't want to do loitering in your lawn or in your room will make you quite relaxed then the comes the positive thinking epictetus once said men are disturbed not by the things but by the views which they take out of them 
it is not the COVID or Corona which is disturbing us. It is our own thought which is disturbing us. Therefore, we need to have a very good, positive kind of thinking. Now I have written one line actually. It is up to you how you look into this. God is nowhere or God is nowhere. See, the letters are same, but how you take it? If you take that God is nowhere, then we are helpless and hopeless. If we think that God is now here, then everything is positive only. Then comes the value system. Why I need to talk about the value is that our priority of the life has changed and since we are confined into our house and we are meeting each other and therefore we are becoming more and more irritable and frustration. Therefore, the incidences of domestic violence has increased. So the best way to deal with these issues are to have a renewed value system. When we are into argument, ideally we shout at each other. But remember, if you take a five rupees coin and a 500 rupees note, and if you leave it, then it is only the coin which will produce the sound. But value-wise, it has got a very minimal value as compared to that note. Remember, when we are shouting at our partner, that means we are devaluating ourselves. If we are devaluating ourselves, then how can we expect that others will give proper value to ourselves? Because it is my life and I know what kind of person I am. Therefore, try to give proper value to yourself. Your life means a lot. Don't degrade its value. Another thing is that where we should give that value, at least that we should have a thought. And when I talk about a value system, it reminds me of a story is of a teacher and students. Actually, that teacher, he had three students who were very brilliant and they have settled abroad. Once these three students, they have visited the teacher's place and they say, sir, we are settled now. You have taught us everything, but kindly teach us how to be happy. We have achieved many things, but still we are not happy. When I talk about this, remember your success is not equated with your happiness. Then he said, I, I will answer this, but one thing what we can do is that let's have tea first. So he prepared, then he brought the tea in a teapot with four sets of cup and plate. The first set was made of platinum, the second was made of gold, third was silver, and fourth one is our bone china cup. Then he poured that. When he poured that into all these four cups and he has offered tea to everyone, then our basic instinct is such that everyone will be desiring to have that tea in that platinum cup. So the luckiest one picked up the platinum one. The second one, he had taken the gold one and third, he had got no option. So he had to take it in the silver. As usual, the wise old teacher, he took it from his bonsai naka. After finishing the cup of tea, he asked, how was the tea? Then the student realized what it should matter and what they are referring to is something which is not congruent to it. Is it the cup which, is, which will determine the taste of the tea or it is the quality of the tea? This is how we will have to 
think about our value system. I said that I am a psychiatrist, so I can uh, say any stupid things here, I believe. Therefore, suddenly in this presentation, mm, this fashionable God of the current day has made entry. Because whenever people are more tense, they nowadays chant Chalisa, J Hanuman Gyanagun Sagar. Why I have put Hanuman here is that even a god like Hanuman suffered from depression. So it is not abnormal for us to suffer from depression. Why I am talking is that if you remember the story of Hanuman, Hanuman was cursed by a saying that he will forget all his energy. And until and unless he is reminded by some wise person, he will not have any power. So he was sitting, he was a backbencher when everyone was there uh, by the seashore. Those who are from commerce, they will be agreeing with me that to make a breeze to go into Lanka to find out whether Sita is there or not will not be a very good option if we take in, into consideration of the financial burden. So they want to send a messenger to find out whereabouts of Sita. At that time, there were many people who said that they don't have got that power. Then someone was pointing towards the backbencher Hanuman. Then Zambuvan reminded Hanuman of his power. And after that, you know what he did, Lankadahan. Remember. Sometimes, even if we can take control of the, some of the situations, because of COVID, many things are beyond our control. Therefore, sometimes we feel that we are not being able to uh, take care of ourselves. Even we do suffer from depression. And in our Indian culture, it is said that we should not talk about our emotions. No, we should talk about our emotional issues. And if you can talk about the emotional issues, then someone, some of your well-wishers or counselors or psychiatrists are ready to become a beer like Jambuvan to remind you of all your power. Therefore, you should try to ventilate out your inner feeling. Why I am talking about many of you people have not seen and the melting of lime. Amar Golwato. What happens? The limestone are poured in a container, then water is poured upon it. Then there is bubbling. But if you uh, close down that container with lead, then it will burst. Similarly, if we keep our tensions inside our brain then one day it will also have some uh, devastating effect. Therefore, we should speak our emotions out. What COVID has done to us, if somebody asks, then I will say that it has given us the concept of we. Because COVID, for the first time in our life, we have started thinking that alone I cannot do anything. Take our, our situation, healthcare workers alone, we cannot control it. Then we need the help of some other people also, police personnel, they are doing their duties, administration, they are doing their duties. So it is a combined effort. Even the general public, they are doing their job by maintaining the social distance because this COVID has taught us together only we can survive. It is not me surviving. It is it's and everyone should survive. And probably many of you have helped those poor people who were having financial problem during lockdown by offering them food. See, this is the fellow feeling and that fellow feeling was given by COVID only. And we together, we will be able to overcome this. This is high time we should think about the priorities of our life. When I talk about the priorities of our life, it reminds me of another example 
that I used to give to my students, where I say that in this jar, if I first put certain big rocks there, then what will happen? It will fill. Then if I ask my students, then they will always say that it is full. Then if I put certain pebbles there, even that pebbles can be accommodated. Then students will change their notion. No, sir, it is now full. Now what will happen if I pour some sand? Then what will happen? Even that can be accommodated. After that, if I pour some water, even that will be accommodated. Now what happens? Let's reverse the whole process. If I put those sand first and fill it up, there is no space for all those big rocks and pebbles. Therefore, this is high time we should prioritize. We should not worry much about the smaller things, else we will not get any sense to deal with the bigger life situations. And COVID has increased our resilience and we will have to take advantage of this. There are certain tips for relaxations that one can do, like meditation, then breathing exercises, yoga. Out of these, I will be talking about breathing exercises because this is the simplest thing and you can perform it at any time, whenever you are anxious, whenever you are worried, whenever you are angry. It is nothing but a normal process of breathing. When we breathe in, that we usually do it. We breathe in, then you hold it for some time, then gradually you breathe it out. Remember the phase of breathing out should be more than the phase, uh, phase of breath in. Nowadays, people are putting many twists. Na? Even in tea, they put certain twists like iced tea, mint tea, ginger tea, what, what not. Let's put a twist even on this breathing exercise. This is the easiest one. With some twist, what you can do is that you can make your breathing abdominal. Means when you breathe in, your chest will remain fixed, but when you breathe in, your abdomen should bulge out. After that, you hold it for some time. You count one, two, three, four. Then gradually you breathe out. When you will breathe out, your stomach or abdomen should go inside. But remember, again, the phase of breathing out should be more than the phase of breathing. If you can perform it 20 to 30 times at one go, you will feel more relaxed. Then, if possible, you can loiter in your lawn, even aerobics, jogging, cycling in your vicinity because you will have that will be dependent on the local situation. So you will have to take into account of that. I have been talking about all these issues, so let's uh, do certain kind of advertisement for my psychiatry also. If you find that these things are not uh, enough to control your anxiety, then our Department of Psychiatry it is running the Crisis Intervention Center where, from where you can take the advantage of all those and psychotherapy and in extreme cases or where it is too much severe and there you might require even medicines to take medicine is nothing something abnormal mm. nowadays i always say that when deepika padukan has suffered from depression she has at least made depression a fashionable term and you can think about her when she said all kind of counseling and psychotherapy didn't work for her. It is the medicine which has changed her life. So don't be afraid. Don't be in that myth that medicine will make you deep. These are all misconceptions. And we, our, we have got certain options because whenever there is certain psychiatric illnesses, it is because of certain scenes in the neurochemicals inside the brain because 
brain controls our behavior, thinking, emotion, and everything through certain neurochemicals. Please do remember that famous dialogue of Lager Hamunna Bhai, where circuit said, Bhai ko chemical locha ho gaya. And that chemical, uh, which has been altered in the brain, will be supplied by the medicine. This is as simple as that. So there is nothing abnormal to take all those medicines. I was talking about positives and positives, and uh, no psychiatric presentation can go without this example of half full or half empty. When I take it as half empty glass means I am a negative person, means I am focusing on what is not around. Nowadays, we are complaining about this is not around, this is not around because our dreams or our desires are not fulfilled. Remember, needs are few, wants are more, our wants are not met. So we are more focusing on all those which are not around. But when I talk about it is half filled, means I am focusing on my resources and I will have to work on these resources now. This is the time to introspect which are the resources on which we need to work and how to proceed with. It might be quite inspi inspiring for many of you, but remember, whatever I am saying is not the gospel. There might be different ways of thinking. Is it the only thing which is plausible or possible? Definitely not. Once Einstein said, I was born intelligent, but it has ruined me. Really. Now use basic common sense. If I say that this glass is always full because other half is filled by air. See, this is the habit that we need to inculcate. If we can inculcate it into our children's mind, then probably the human race will not be at this place. We'll have to think beyond COVID and beyond COVID. And their life is much, much bigger than the COVID. Don't ignore the smallest second. Every second is important. I was talking about the time management. Is there a difference between 1.01 1 .01 and 0.99? Yes, but it is very negligible. It reminds me of Batasus. What happened? Their price is 99, 999.95. And we are not asking the five pesa scenes. Similarly, people are not focusing on this 0 0.02. If some shopkeeper asks for 1.01 .01 or 0.99, we won't be asking for that things. But remember, I believe being the part of all those SP means engineers forum, you all are good at very good at mathematics. So let's see. If I put it as 2 d power 365, and now let's see the difference. The difference will become 37.8 and 0 0.03. Now will you ask for the things? Now every second we are wasting now. At the end of the 365 days will make a huge difference. So try to utilize your time properly. And that is the time management. Once Akbar asked Birbal, you write something which I should read. And every day I should see this. And I will keep it in front of my eyes. And in my days of sorrow, I will feel happy. And when I am very sad, it will make me very happy. He wrote, Ye bakt guzar jayega. Really, this COVID time will also pass by. This is really a hard time. And during this hard time, many people are doing many activities like this kind of web near. Some people are doing quite social work. Even we uh, have come up with our own work called Protikul Khamoy Arulobologia Manohik Zot on all those mental health tips that I have been uh, talking about. 
have been incorporated in this work of ours. Uh, thank God, this is my last slide. Probably you won't be bored too much now. Uh, though we are not very fond of China, but remember, let's uh, uh, take it from China. In China, stress is expressed by two symbols. One means danger and other means opportunity. In every stressful situation, along with danger, there is an opportunity and we should look into that opportunity and that is the best form of time management. And I believe COVID has given us the time to think about these opportunities, taking into account of our resources and we will overcome this and we should prepare for post COVID life. Uh, thank you for not sleeping like this side. Thank you very much. One meeting with us, Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed a very wonderful and enlightening session for today's mm -hmm. evening. I hope everyone is benefited and got the solution for their problems. If anyone has any queries, you can write it down in the chat box. Also, I would like to request everyone to fill up the feedback form that will be given in the link in the chat box. Now, if... I... Uh, being able to look at the set box that is the problem <laughs> yeah i can now but i am not being able to look in the... yeah now it is okay so if anyone have any queries you can write it in the chat box Also, please fill up the form, uh, feedback form. The link is given in the chat box. I would like to hand over to Shannon Pujari to conclude the session with the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Narjana. So, uh, uh, in the chat box, uh, it has been asked. Yeah, sir, how? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Deal with mood swings. Mood swings. Okay. Uh, good. Mm, how to deal with the mood swings is that uh, if you look into your mood swings, then sometimes mood swing is because of certain events or stimulus. See. Uh, we are human beings, we react to different kinds of situations. And sometimes this situation might be pleasurable to us, sometimes it might not be pleasurable to us. The only problem lies here is that sometimes when you cannot identify the problem for which you are irritable, this is high, high time that you should consult a specialist. But if you find those causes, then you sit down when you are quite relaxed. At that time, you try to analyze, you take a diary, you write down the situation first, then at that situation, what was your mood like and what are the thoughts that you uh, has come to your mind, then reacted it. After doing that, what you can do is that uh, when you are, you have analyzed, try to avoid all those situations which will make you angry. Now, another thing is that when we are angry, we tend to speak too much. Please don't try to utter many things at that time always judges for others mistake and we are simply lawyers for our own mistake means we will have reason for our mistake and we will justify it. therefore when you have to start a communication when you are angry don't start to eat you because when we talk about you is that 
means I am in a complaining mood. When I will have to rather start with I think. Means when you think you will get some time. If you had to, if you are very angry, then write down all those words that you need to talk to that person. And when you are calm and quiet, strike out all those words. If someone else have said to you, would have made you very unhappy or distressing. So you replace those. Means by that way, we can remove some of the harsh words which will make our personality quite pleasant. Try to keep yourself into other frame of mind. That is what we call it as empathy. Usually you will find that uh, most of the time the fight is between two right person at the right position. Means if I am writing W and if you are situating, yes, if you are sitting in front of me and you will be reading it as M, and we will be fighting over that W and M. Rather try to change that way of thinking. And you can, of course, apply your breathing exercise. That will also make you quite relaxed. If these situations are not working for you, then you can come to any of the mental health professionals, then we will assess what is there. You require a deeper kind of analysis and accordingly will give you the treatment. Hope I have answered. Uh, then what a few of the questions I am not being able to see actually. That is the only problem. Next question is from uh, what, does stress causes any brain abnormalities? Like it is, it will have any effect on gray matter, white matter? She asked about it. See, our brain is a very complex structure. Brain controls our behavior through certain neurochemicals and different areas of the brain. Fine. And brain, uh, whenever we are stressed, different areas of the brain are susceptible for various kinds of uh, changes. These are certain you know, neurohormonal changes. The, as well as there are certain adaptive mechanisms also. When the stress is too much, then our adaptive mechanism fails. And at that time, we do suffer from various psychological and psychiatric consequences. Yes, the brain do changes some of the brain biochemistry and some of the uh, neuronal transmissions as well as the synaptic plasticity. Brain uh, gets uh, changed because of this kind of stresses. So next question is from Pranav. Uh, he asked about how to cope up with the work from home environment amidst the pandemic. Yeah. So ultimately, Pranjalda has asked a question. Okay, good. Pranjalda, the problem is that uh, the work from home, it is the only feasible thing at this moment that we need to um, admit it. The problem with work from home is that uh, many a times you are, I have already said that you are exposing uh, your living room to the whole of the world. Moreover, there is no personal free time. But remember, uh, in between there should be break. I won't say that one should be sitting all the time in front of the screen because I am more concerned about the mental health and the screen time. The maximum allowable screen time is 45 minutes to one hour. That have to be there and in between frequent breaks have to be there. All the time you may not be sitting. Sometimes okay, you are sitting for half an hour then, uh, okay, your laptop is on, loiter here and there. But another problem has been there when the people are working from home, they will wear their upper in a very good way and in the lower they either come in 
sorts or whatever not. So this is a problem, I do admit, because it is sometimes quite difficult to be in the official dress. But remember, uh, you can walk in between, take a break, uh, follow certain relaxation techniques, and sometimes even listening to the music. And there can be a balance between your personal life as well as your office life. So if you can maintain that balance, then most of the problems will be sorted out because we will have to work, then only we will be earning something to continue our life. So work is also important, but at the same time, that balance is very important and frequent breaks is what can be done so that you don't become too much frustrated with work from home work. Probably I have answered his question because I, I am not being able to look into all those questions. This is the problem. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, sir. I will be saying it. The next question, can you answer the was very well and it was a informative one. So, uh, next question is uh, asked that whether how to deal with the silly small situations that cause us stress and it might disrupt the whole day schedule of our life. Uh, can you repeat it? Uh, how to deal with silly situations, small situations, which yeah. causes or arises where from which stress arises and it might have the whole day schedule. Oh, okay, now I can see. It. Okay, how can we get it now? Yeah, Susmita Upadhyay. Okay, fine. Now, uh, see that sometimes we should be able to leave the situation as it is. As you have said that this is a small situation. It is not necessary to focus on each and every situation. Sometimes we should let it go also. If I ask you to hold a paper, only a single A4 size paper, uh, whose weight will be probably one or two gram, not more than that, and uh, being an adult, I believe it should not be very difficult to hold it. But remember, if I ask you to hold it for two hours together, then your hand will start paining. Even these small issues which have been there, if you keep it in your mind, then your brain will also start paining. Therefore, it is always better to discuss with someone. If it is not possible, then simply write it down in a diary. Even if you are finding it quite difficult, then simply divert your mind to something else. Okay, I'll think about it later. And you engage in some other activities. That is the time management. Because being a normal human being, our brain has got a very limited capacity. Because we can do one thing at one time only, until and unless you are as brilliant as Hitler. Hitler could do many things together. So you divert your mind to something else, or you simply take a walk, or you simply deep breath, or even if it is not possible, okay, I will think about it later. Now let's postpone it. Even that kind of thing will help you because at the end of the day, it is not that whatever you think will happen. No, it is not going to happen. It is a probability of 50 50. Try to understand that if we think that it is going to happen, means we are making that 50% probable to the 100% certainty. And that is not the thing. And remember, try to leave this moment. So we always say that you should follow here and now principle. I don't know what will happen to me tomorrow. I don't have got control over my past, but what I can control is my present. So live in this present. Present means gift. This is a gift by the God. And if someone gives you 
then you don't destroy it. So try to enjoy this moment. And that is what is, uh, I would like to say that the philosophy of positive mental health. Thank you, sir. Okay. In this way, we can reduce the stress from small situations. Then what should we do when we fail? How to rise up from that feeling? Good. See, we do learn from our mistakes and failure is the part of our life. Those who have not failed means they have not tried. We should try to have the proper meaning of faith. If you are a fan of great Abdul Kalam sir, then you remember what he said by fail is for in learning. One famous scientist said, I have failed thousand times, means I have discovered thousand paths that will lead me to failure. Means this failure will make you more experience. At least you know why you have failed. Try to change the way of thinking, but don't give up. Sometimes we may not be able to control the situation. In such situations, we should be quite flexible. The moment we become flexible, most of the problems will be removed. If you take the example of Sosin Tendulkar, do you remember the first score, first one day score he scored, it is a zero. See, he has come up with that. So failure is part of life. Remember both the positive and negative poles are important. Even in a battery, torchlight battery, there is a positive pole and a negative pole. Both the poles are necessary to generate the current from which your torch is working. Similarly, this, this negative feeling from this failure is also equally important from all those positive experiences. This will generate a current that we will call it as life. So this is how we will have to deal with all those negative things. And uh, this is the, what I was talking about is also probably answering to Aung Suman's question of uh, shifting the mindset from negative to positive psychologically. And we uh, follow that famous dictum of Epictetus, men are disturbed not by the events, but by the views which they take out of that. And probably that example of half filled and half empty is one of such examples of being positive from negative and we can follow that from our day-to-day -day activity and try to celebrate your success at the end of the day you always think what are the good things that you have done we always focus on the negative issues but remember if you can think these are the good things that i have done that will give you the confidence and um, that will boost your morale to work even better. Always try to celebrate the success even with certain praise to yourself. Yes, I have done it. That will inculcate a very kind, positive kind of feeling in your mind. This is how we can proceed from negative to positive. If we are focusing that I have not performed this, I was not being able to perform this, I, I could not sit for half an hour uh, in my table. This all negative things will make you tense inside. Yeah, suppose you are not being able to work properly all throughout the day. If you can sit even for 10 minutes, this is the credit you should give to yourself. Yes, today I could sit for 10 minutes, means I can. This is how your positivity will come. And it is you who will have to find out that Hanuman inside you. And we might be guiding you, but it is you and we can only show you the path. It is you who will be traveling. Is there any question? 
uh, there was one more question how to deal with procrastination feeling yeah this is also partly answered and uh, this is the best thing to follow is the here and now phenomenon remember tomorrow never dies is a frame of only zero zero seven for psychiatrist tomorrow never comes if i have to do something i will do it now don't waste too much time about planning you execute it even if there is some failure then you try to modify it in between in that road you should proceed with if you try to feel that as nahi karenge okay fine we won't do it today from tomorrow no at least we should start it now starting a thing is equivalent to half done remember that when you have started in spite of having that procrastination don't think that i will be too tired i won't be able to do i don't have got desire or the drive to continue put into your mind it is the same me who was procrastinating has started it now or i have started thinking about now i will do one step now or if you find that job is quite complex you break down into smaller steps take one step at a time if you have finished it then you celebrate that success yes i have completed the first part so i can do it so i will be able to finish the second part also and this is how you should proceed when you are having procrastination that was very informative so we have another question what is the best precaution rather than to move to the daniel stage see a denial is a normal human reaction initially when a bad thing has come to our mind usually we are into that denial phase means that as on the world no it cannot happen to me it cannot happen to my near and dear ones this is a normal reaction after that what will happen is that bargaining phase in that uh, oh god please uh, save me i moi mandir ta horai ekhon di dim no hole ene ko hobo i will leave my uh, is to be to be wrong so this is the bargaining stage we go through then usually it or uh, gradually we move to the acceptance of that even uh, the early we accept it more healthy we will be at the end of the day therefore it is when the person is in denial at least some of his friends should tell him or her the truth sometimes suppose there is death of someone many a times people they are afraid that should we reveal the truth many people try to hide that truth it reminds me of nietzsche's saying that was actually that has inspired the famous dialogue of kavi kavi gam ye nahi hai ki tum bewafa nikli gam ye hai ki mohabbat par se hamara bharosa uth gaya hai what originally fredrick nietzsche said i am sad not because you lied i am sad because no longer i can trust you therefore it is always better to accept that and others should try to say it maybe not in a harsh tone initially in the denial phase usually lasts maximum for one to two days after it goes if it prolongs then we should start talking about that maybe gradually may not be in a Mm, sudden 
exposure one should not give but in a gradual way we can tell about the reality and the person will be able to accept it and for those who should take the precaution to not to go into the denial phases that you should be very very practical for that reason uh, those there is a psychology called existential psychology actually the existentialists they always believe that our life we don't have got control over our birth we don't have got control over our date that is one is b other is d in between b and d there is c c is the choice means i can choose how to live my life so i need to be quite practical i must be prepared myself to deal with all those stresses even bad things can happen to me many people make various plans for their bad days if we are more uh, practical oriented or if we are living in the present days then probably this kind of denial phase will be much much shorter and we should be able to overcome it informative and it was a uh, very uh, point to the point answer to the question so hope everyone's questions have been asked and i could not see any more questions left out so came to the end of the ambassador lecture program on stress and anxiety management amidst the covid-19 pandemic so i sharan on behalf of sp Trubal university sector, would like to express our gratitude to dr trubajati bhuya sir for on stress management and sir for being up with amidst his busy schedule during this pandemic I would also like to mention about the literature is for more and for Bulgaria Marathon that and it has a cooperation with this webinar session as the content is also available in his uh, that I have mentioned. The SP chapter is also helpful to present men as head of the department of petroleum technology with the Bulgaria University. Dr. Sir, the Petroleum Technology, Ms. Rokhya Sam, Department of Petroleum Engineering, Dubai, Dhanista, Assistant City of Hyderabad College, Dr. Smith, from Assam Energy Institute, for being us and facing the session. I would also like to thank the participants from worldwide, and uh, I could also mention about from New Delhi, he has raised a very uh, raised up a very informative question. Uh, it was an interesting question for everyone. So I would like to thank again, sir, for being with us as the guest speaker and for giving us your valuable time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Hope to host you soon in the near future. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure and an honor to be part of it, really. Thank you so much.